Good morning, reservations. <laughs> oh man, that's how every every morning should start up. You know, even if you're not on a reservation, you probably you probably was one before then. You know, kind of like here in Seattle. You know, let's just not act like Seattle wasn't occupied by natives here. You know, there's a lot of natives there before and. It's good to acknowledge that land and acknowledge them reservations out there, regardless of where you are, North Dakota, North Carolina, North Hampshire, um, the old Hampshire and the new one too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, welcome to episode 103, I believe, of the Dom Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Dom, you know, the guy who's been hosting it for a while now. Um, what has everyone been up to? That's been a question I've been asking you guys for a long time. Um, but it's honest, you know, what are you doing today? You know, are you self-improving? Are you self, uh, not improving? And that's not my job to really make sure you self-improve, but it's my job to make sure you feel good, right? Actually, it's my job to make myself feel good. And then in doing so, that helps you guys feel good. But anyways, what has everyone been doing? Um, this is now, it's post Christmas now. Today is the 28th and wow, three days after Christmas. And I'm not going to be that guy that says, oh my God, you know, Christmas is already here because it comes at the same time every year, 365 days a year. Um, so not too much of a shock, but I'm glad to be here today. Um, so the first thing that I, I think of when I wake up to is to just jump right into it. You know, um, I think about what I'm going to drink right in the morning. And I, I, I don't know why I think about it because I know what I'm going to have to drink every morning. It's going to be water. But I always try to trick myself like I'm going to somehow have a pop in the morning or a soda water or something. In the, I just don't know why I even kid myself. So um, today I, I had some water, made some coffee for Quina. And I now I, I didn't eat before recording. Partly because if I eat, I was going to watch a show, then I was going to watch TikTok, and then I wouldn't have recorded till later. But now, um, looking into that, I um, am going to make, I made a big ham for Christmas. Never made one before. Basically, just stick it in the oven. <laughs> it was not that hard. Um, so, I made a ham. Now I have ham, and I'm going to grill that, or fry that up with some eggs, and then like a... English muffin, so it's going to be like an Egg McMuffin. Oh, dude, I can't wait. You know, Canada still be, you know, calling ham bacon up there. That's a little, um, you know, good for them. But until they start getting bacon, bacon, man, it's hard to take them a little serious. You know, they're already really nice people, and then they don't even have bacon, so it's like, what am I missing here? You know? Canadian bacon is, uh, it's special, but I would, uh, give the edge to regular bacon, I think. Um, so yeah, so I, I had that big, um, decision to make there. And yesterday, um, we had a huge snowstorm out here in Seattle and, um, that was kind of nuts. So let me walk you through my day these past or yesterday. So it was snowy. My girlfriend needed a ride to work and my car is better than the snow. So I gave her a ride to work and, you know, all, all good and fine, you know, and then I come home, realize I have a whole bunch of laundry to do and clean the apartment up because it's just a mess. So I clean the apartment, go to the laundromat and here's what happens. I'm driving, you know, just driving the regular car and you know, when you're trying to take a right somewhere, but someone's in the middle lane and you can't really get into the right lane that happened. So then there's a car behind me that's honking at me and the lady's going like this, raising her hands in the air, you know, lowering the eyebrows, you know, and then she's, I can hear her calling me a fucking, you know, the B word. And I'm just like, I can't do anything lady. So what do I do? A proceed to just sit there and not do anything. B proceed to flip her off and call her the B word. C, um, don't go because I can't go and continue to raise my hands in the air and kind of tease her a bit or D, all of them. Give you a second for that. 
Um, I did C. I continued to mess with her because she was making my day hell. And I wanted to mess with her. So she kept doing this and calling me that. So I continued to act like I couldn't move and raise my hands. And um, it probably wasn't the right decision because, you know, encouraging road rage is not a good thing. But you know what? How she was acting, it's just uh, the way the the way it went. And she drove off and she flipped me off and she called me a B word, rolled down the window and stopped. And I just laughed <laughs> because it was so ridiculous because it was a matter of five seconds that was wasted. Um, so I went to the laundromat and did that. And then I went to JC Penny. Oh God. That's, that's a story in itself. Go to JC Penny. So I'm looking for, um, a shirt, a black shirt. Didn't have one, but then I told Quinna they had one her size and she gave me money to go get her one. So I got her one and there was a big line and there was like 20 people in line, 25, you know, 25 people in like probably the whole store, 20 people in line. So I'm like, okay, I'll go stand in line. I don't have anywhere to be. It's my day off, whatever. Um, this lady, oh my God, I got to go stand in this humongous line. Says it just like that. Big lady, heavy set, blonde, glasses, shirt doesn't really fit her. Um, has her phone out. It's not really paying attention to life with her three kids. And kids who are probably my age. And we're standing in line and, you know, the line's going really, really slow. The lady who's at the... You know, the cashier could barely speak English. Looks like she's from like, she sounded like she had a Russian accent. And um, she's going as slow as she, you know, as fast as she can. But she's going pretty slow. You know, I'm standing in line like 10 minutes, still haven't budged. So this lady was like, oh my God, like just mad. <laughs> and it was so funny. So I'm just sitting there kind of just on Bleacher Report or, you know, Fantasy looking at my team that's not going to the playoffs. Um, and then finally she gets up there and her card gets declined. Oh my God. So her card gets declined and she's making this huge, huge scene. Like, oh my God, how would you decline my card on purpose? You're doing that. And then just, and then the lady's like so shook. She like, she takes the shoes and tries to put them in a bag, drops them. And then the lady's like, oh my God. And I'm like, Jeez, like, so I get up there and say, what a day, hon. And she still looks shook up and got my stuff, got out of there. But, uh, man, people will be rude, man. Man, you wouldn't think people had places to be the day after Christmas, but they do, man. They got gift cards to spend. They got money to spend. It, It's a different type of people, man. That's the... after Christmas, the gift cards come rushing in the store man that's insane you know i don't really oh <laughs> that's funny man i just don't i just don't get it i mean actually yeah i do get it i don't know why i would say that oh i don't get it obviously i do get it um yeah so what else has been going down um Wow, Christmas was, uh, you know, Christmas was eventful as always. I mean, I hope everyone had a good Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, um, happy holidays or happy non-holidays to for the specific date that we celebrate on. Um, it was insane. You know, I got a lot of good things and I uh, got to give a lot of good things. Um, had a budget this year. Um, trying to get better at, uh, you know, actually having a budget for Christmas because I usually just go over and then I feel bad and then I'm behind on everything. But, you know, that's just part of getting old. I'm 24 now. It's getting to the point now where you're like, oh, shoot, do I really uh, spend that much money? And, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, it's storytelling season. It's cold out. Everyone's bringing in them stories, man, coming in, you know, gathering together, um, sitting next to one another, you know, telling stories and whatnot. What stories can you tell? You know, if I could think of a story, what could I tell you? Um, yeah, I put on these uh, these shoes in the snow, and they just were not good shoes. So I started walking around, and you know, my feet started feeling numb. And I walked around, and eventually noticed my feet were cold. So I went and bought some new socks, and you know, and then there was this guy who said, "You got to pick A, B, or C." And I said, "B." 
And he said, well, here's these socks. These are good. And I picked those socks and my feet were warm. And oh, man, you know, from that point on, my, my feet were happy, happily ever after. They were warm. And that story right there was completely made up. Just true. It's a true story I made up, you know. But um, I was talking to one of my buddies, and John has been on the been on the pod before, and he brought me to attention of this this thing about um going to Five Guys. Man, dude, going to Five Guys is expensive. I haven't been there, and before everyone has that that joke, go oh, Five Guys, huh? Huh? Dom C and Five. The burger restaurant. Um, it's expensive, dude. It's like $18 a patty, it feels like. You walk into Five Guys, I swear to God, they charge you for breathing. You know? You walk into Five Guys, they say, hey man, that's already $4 added to your burger for you breathing the air. You know, they, they say, oh, we'll give you some fries and some peanuts for that, you know? But that's that's what you owe us. You can add anything you want to your burger, but we're charging you for them peanuts. and We're charging you for them, you know, them patties. Dude, those patties are $6 a patty, and they get away with it because they, they cook with peanut oil. I remember, like, there used to be this girl in high school. She was deathly allergic to um, peanuts. And, you know, all of us would be trying to plan, you know, something. And back then, you know, nobody was really, nobody really knew how to be you know, woke in terms of allergies, just, though, you know, 10 years back, especially when you're young, you don't really, you know, know. But I remember there was always this one kid who obviously really liked the girl and would always be like, yo, we cannot go to Five Guys if we're going out to eat after school because she can't have any. Bro, I don't even got the money for Five Guys anyway. You know? We're not, believe me, we're not going. It's 20 minutes out of the way. We're not going to Five Guys. Or, like, it would somehow come up in every conversation, I felt like. Like, oh, did you know she can't go to Five Guys because they cook in peanut oil? I do know they cook in peanut oil. Damn near says it on every box in there. You would think you would know by now. And I think Five Guys is just a little greasy, to be honest with you. You know? I just, when I have a burger, I want it to be somewhat clean. I mean, I know it's not going to be clean, but, you know, something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been um, kind of bitter lately about driving places in the snow because I'm not really a big snow guy. I'm um, not snow guy. Like, as I love the snow, but, like, driving in it. Who likes driving in it? Um, but um, I'll be complaining, man. Like, oh, man, I'm not trying to drive when the drive is literally five minutes away. Like, what's going on with me there? I don't know. Like, I'm just like, I I leave the town, get my groceries. Like, it's a dang adventure from the res or something. I mean, I'm in the city now, but like, I when I would live out there, I would treat it as like um, going out for the journey for food for the week, and then I would just go back in hermit, you know hermit mode but you know now it's I do that here too even in the city I'm like alright I'm gonna go to the grocery store get stuff for a week not leaving until next week unless I gotta go to work I don't know why I do that it's kind of uh, a little kind of ridiculous if you ask me um what's going on here um oh yeah <laughs> Hey, I need a ride to the town. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Oh my God. I can't believe I didn't talk about this. So yeah, when I went to the laundromat after that whole ordeal with that lady, um, I get there and I have, you know, no change or whatever. And I put in my $5 bill to get change and it spits out dollar, dollar coins. And it says that, like, all machines take dollar coins, whatever. Or machines give you dollar coins for the machines, and they work just as good as quarters. I'm like, okay, fine. Put it in there. I go to the washing machines. They don't take dollar coins. So now not only am I down the $5 cash, which was probably going to be easier to get quarters than the dollar coins, 
now I have these dollar coins that aren't useful in the laundromat. Um, so at this point, I'm there was two washers open and I needed to get to them. And there was like a whole bunch of people. And like, I'm trying to figure this out the whole time, like trying to get my stuff in the washer. And there's these people like praying on my washing machine, like waiting for me to slip up so they can take it. And, and, um, I had to get this app on my phone to pay for the laundry pay range. And, you know, it saved me, but at the same time, it was like, man, I had vultures waiting. You know, have you guys ever been to a laundromat? There's only a couple open. And it's just like vultures surrounding the washer, respectfully, of course. You know, there's two washers open. There's people with clothes, and they're trying to be like, who was here first? And then you don't want to cut them off. I just go for it, dude. You got to be ruthless in the laundromat, so you're going to be there longer. So I just went for it. And I think I cut this old guy off, but I didn't feel bad, dude. You know what? I was there first. I went to the change machine. It was my turn to wash shit. And that's all because here in our laundromat, um, in our apartment building, the dryer's broken. So we have to go to the laundromat. Big deal. You know, at least we even have a laundromat to go. Um, but that was a little, that was a little crazy to me. Um, I've also been looking at, um, cryptocurrency i don't know if anyone here is into cryptocurrency and if you are um give a shout and tell me which one you're into at 425-320-3641 um call into the hotline tell me which one's your your you know which one you like and why i think um cryptocurrency is not only like taking over but i think it's interesting i don't have much at all really invested in it um but those and nfts and all that kind of stuff is like um it's kind of cool to see how it's coming, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the next internet or anything, but it's, um, definitely taking a sweep in what's going on lately. Um, and there was this NFT project I looked at, it's called crypto dads and the cheapest one was like 500 bucks. And that's still crazy. But like, man, I, I don't know. It was just kind of interesting that people are really spending that much money. And if you have bought one, let me know. I think it's, um, it's cool. It's cool technology. Um, but as soon as like it starts getting shady, that's when I'm like, oh, that's what it's for. It's kind of like when Snapchat came out, like Snapchat was big because then people got away with sending gross pic, you know, like above 18 pictures, you know, and that's, they say that's a reason why it kind of took off. Same with Tumblr. Cause like pornography started kind of like coming into the picture um, and maybe NFTs are kind of like that. Like, Hey, this NFT, it's like how art is like art. Like you're telling me some murals and some drug deals and some, all that wasn't happening with some of Picasso's art or some of certain people's art. It was definitely like, that's how money was. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not trying to get into this big old like conspiracy theory of what happened and what didn't happen. And, um, but yeah, I mean, so it's snowing out here in Seattle to be random and um people are losing their mind people don't really know what to do out here in the snow um kind of myself included but um everything just shuts down you know you're in the northwest you have an inch of snow shut it down shut it down you know one inch of snow two inches shut it down bro we ain't going in today you know we got hills here acting like we're the only places in city with hills (laughs) Oh yeah, dude. If it snows one inch, yeah, I don't. I I can't make it into work today. Tree fell on my driveway, bro. You live in the the city. Yeah, dude. A tree fell though. Right on the intersection. <laughs> I I can't get in. I ain't taking the bus either. Oh man, it would any anything but taking the bus for some people. Um, man. Oh man. So, what else is What's going on in uh, Indian? What's going on in Native country today? Well, I know there's Indian country today news, but um, I guess I can just look at Indian country today. And for all my non-tribal folks, I can look at um, what else is going on in like non-Indian country today, so you guys don't feel like I'm leaving you out. Um. Education to entertainment changes in 2021. Um, 
ICT's top entertainment stories of 2021. Pictures of res dogs on here. Um, that's awesome. Indigenous, oh, indigenous t- over 20 and buff. Marvel wants you. <laughs> Come on. Holla at your boy. <laughs> no, I, I know they probably just... Um, indigenous love for Jason Momoa, director of Sterling Harjo talks Reservation Dogs. Hashtag Native Nerd reviews Reservation Dogs. Bill Burr's Reservation Dogs. New guy. Um, oh, most of these are Reservation Dogs. Um, that's cool. Um, okay, and then everyone else who's just, you know, doesn't really... Hey, Dom, I don't really... I'm not, I don't identify as Native. Cool, that's okay. Let's just go look at the Seattle Times because that's mostly where these people are. Winter weather prompts closures and delays throughout Seattle. Yes, we know that. Um, Central Michigan to fill in to face Wazoo in the Sun Bowl. Ooh, if you guys are Wazoo people, that's a a big thing going on. And then one more thing that isn't kind of sports related. Let's just go entertainment. Um, Stream in the new year of New Year's at the Seattle. So you can zoom in to see the Seattle lighting and all that kind of thing. I think that's Seattle's thing of like trying to be... Hey, we have a New Year's Eve thing too. Check us out. Come spend your money. Remember, Seattle is a thing. Seattle also had the World's Fair. We also had the Sonics. Um, Jimi Hendrix was from here. I think um, Bruce Lee's buried here. Um, Pearl Jam's from here. What else is going on? Uh, there's a lot of th- Nirvana's from here. There's a lot of bands from here. I even think Soundgarden was from here. Um, I don't know who, what kind of what big rappers are from. Seattle, I think Boogie with the hoodies, like from, he's from, or no, Little Mosey's from here. Um, big rappers from, oh well, Macklemore. Um, other than him, uh, yeah, Little Mosey, Jay Park, Gifted, Gab, Travis Thompson, um, um, Seattle hip hop is on a hot streak. Um, three. Three years of big rappers coming out of Seattle. Um, man, I could just be... If you guys are not into hip-hop, this is probably just boring. Um, I'm just going to say big artists from Seattle because then it gives us all... Um, <laughs> literally, the thing I just said, the Sonics, like, they're... Or maybe that's a band. That could just actually be a band. My bad. Are these people by a longhouse? Okay, um, Jimi Hendrix, The Sonics, The Fabulous Whalers, Nirvana, Macklemore, um, and Pearl Jam. Oh, well, that's that's cool. Band of Horses, Death Cab, for Cutie, um, Brandy Charlie. Oh, that's 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 cool. You know, post, the Postal Service. You know, there's some, you know, known people from here. I don't think we're top tier. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, I think, and Pearl Jam bring us pretty high up there, but... I mean, you look at LA, Chicago, New York, they got some big, I mean, Jimi Hendrix is huge, man. Nirvana's huge. So is Soundgarden. So actually I, I give us a a chance if we're going with like the grunge. I mean, we're going to win the grunge, you know, but hip hop and rap, I don't think we're winning. We're not beating the LA or New York or anything like that. I also think like sometimes I just want to get to the point where I can just have two fridges. That's the highest I think I really want to go. If I can just get two fridges, one in the kitchen with all the food and then the one in the outside with all the drinks, that's as like as rich as I want to be. Anything above that feels extra. You know, I don't need three or four cars. I don't need all that. I just want two fridges, man. Two fridges, one with food, one with all my, you know, my drinks. Anything past that, you know, I'm just, that's just cherries on top to me, you know? Two fridges, don't even get me started on three. If I get a a fridge in the house, then the drink fridge, and then I got a cooler with the fish and the meat in it, come on. That's all you need, man. Anything other than that, you're doing too much, I feel like, you know? It just feels a little extra to me. You just need them dual fridges and you're doing good. That's, you know, that's when you know someone's doing good. You know, you walk, you know, you go to your friend's house and they got an extra fridge. 
stocked with drinks. They're doing good. You know, my, my buddy Thomas, you know, I went over to his house and um, when we were younger and his dad always had a, a second fridge or his mom and dad, I should say. And, um, you know, they had two fridges. Man, that was that was it right there. You know, that was the move. And, you know, shout out to them, you know, because we would drink, you know, like they said, a smorgasbord of all their drinks when we'd go there and visit, you know, shout out to them. Um, and also in my house in college, I had, we had two fridges and we were doing good. You didn't need much more than that, you know. Um, anything else, anything more than two fridges is just doing too much, man. You know, like I just don't really need that. Um, also, I've been listening to a lot of Spotify or I listen to a lot of um, music on an app that is green with three lines in it. You know, if I'm not going to say um, the name. Um, but um, I'm really thankful for the Spotify Rewind playlist. I really am. But I'm also kind of like indifferent with it. The playlist on Spotify Rewind does, you know, puts me in a good mood. puts me in music that I really like to listen to. But it traps me there. Yeah, Spotify. Spotify Rewind playlist. I'm thankful for it. But I think it just traps me in those those twenty five songs, and then I don't even I don't ever branch out of them. You know, for this past month, I've been listening to that same playlist and the same twenty five songs, and man, it's driving me crazy. It's driving me crazy. I love it. Everything you know, every little app has its own little thing. I've always been on Spotify though for a long time. I, I really like that app. I'm really glad that um the pod is always so on there. Um, and Apple Podcasts. Remember, you guys should check that out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You know, you got red, orange, green, and uh, pink, white. You know, that's kind of Apple Music. It's kind of orange, pink, and white kind of thing. I need to get on a blue one. Um, I'm working on Patreon, and I'm working on Discord as well. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, if I have a Patreon, like, what I would even charge for. Um, so... You know, that's just the thing in the works. Oh, Twitch. Twitch is blue. I should start twitching. Twitch is um, video game streaming. Um, but yeah, um, let me see if I can think of anything else that's going on. You know, weekly events is what kind of goes down, you know. And, you know, res dogs are out there just doing their thing still. You know, they're still uh, looking for warmth, maybe looking for some food, maybe looking for a mate. You know, res dogs be looking for mates too. That's the thing, you know. Res dogs are looking, you know, for food, but they're also looking for a companion. And not earthly companion either. You know, they're looking for love. You know, so maybe if you know you know a single dog, you know, who likes to shack up with them res dogs, you know, on the res, you know, let them know. Because I know some res dogs will be walking forever to find someone. You know, they're... They're going through the mud. They're going through the Puget Sound. They're going through, uh, you know, they're going through everything. They're going through the woods. They're going through garbage. They're going through backyards. You know, they're going through gopher holes to try to find these these other res dogs, you know. But, you know, I'm not even just thinking in the, you know, sexual way for them. You know, I'm thinking for, like, companionship. They want a friend that they can go eat, you know, garbage together. You know, I mostly, you'll see sometimes a pack of them, though, and they look like they're doing pretty good. You know, three of them walking around, you know, stinky. <laughs> you know, not really the cleanest of dogs, but they're happy. And they're with their boys, with their with the girls, or whatever, you know, gender they are, or whatever gender they identify with. You know, as a dog, you know, you gotta, you know, they they do that, too, Right? So, you know, they're in the snow, too. So, if you got, you know, you see one, you got an extra room in your house to keep them warm, invite them in, man. You know, wouldn't it? I mean, they got fur, you know, a lot of people like to say, but, you know, fur can only do you so much, especially if you're wet. You know, don't go stand in the lakes, too, if it's frozen and be hitting on the glass. That's not worth it, man. I did that as a kid. I'd go to this pond with my buddy, and we would jump on this lake, and it's just, oh, my God. I swear, every time... We would do it. It would crash in, you know, and it was right next to his house. So it wasn't that bad, but, and we don't get record freezing temperatures here, but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was crazy time. 
Um, I used to be really into airsoft guns as a kid. Was anyone else in really involved in or really into airsoft guns as a kid? Like BB guns, like you couldn't no, like that's like you're gonna hurt someone with that. Like that's something you shoot like if you're gonna go hunting with or like a dog keeps like attacking you, you know. Um But yeah, I was really into airsoft gun. I remember I got this like FAMAS airsoft gun, three round burst, and I thought it was so cool and it broke. It didn't even work. But then I got um airsoft pistols, those are cool. Um, we would like, oh my God, we were like, we would play these games where we'd like play, like we're playing call of duty or halo. Like we would just run around with guns and shoot each other with them. And I'm not condoning, you know, that either. I'm not condoning running around with guns and shooting each other, but they were airsoft guns. And also like people had Nerf guns too. So like, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm the only one who's ever talked about guns before, but you know, everyone had Nerf guns and airsoft, but I was really in airsoft. Like we would like play games and then we would start like fighting and like i don't know it's like navy i don't know how i mean one of my friends went into the armed forces but we loved all that stuff so much i don't know why we didn't consider it i mean mostly because you know i know some people didn't want us to go like our family and stuff but as a kid it, it you know it looked fun and man i said that one time to a recruiter one time i was like yeah i like having airsoft gun fights and the guy was like that could be your reality man you can go out there and do that same thing. You get paid for it. Get your college paid for. It's like, man, I'm just here to do the pull up and get my bag, man. I'm not trying to, you know, I just want my, I just want my, uh, my cinch bag and a sticker. That's all I want. I don't really want to enlist, man. I think I'm already like enlisted technically, like with my driver's license. I think that's what happened. Like if you're a dude, you have to enlist to get your driver's license. I think that's how it goes. I could be wrong. I could I could I could have read it wrong. You know, I read I read a lot of things wrong. Sometimes my girlfriend will say, "Hey, can you make me a tea?" and I need her to tell me four times and maybe I need to get my ears cleaned. Or maybe I just like maybe it just goes in and out the other ear. Maybe I'm just like, I don't know. But yeah, she'll be like, "Hey, you know, can you make me a tea and make me a certain tea I do and then it's totally wrong and I don't know, maybe I need to work on my my ears." Get one of those, um, you know, the um, candle things for my ears, you know. I need to insert that candle in the ear canal and light the flame, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, man, that's what's been going down here. You know, it's snowy. Got my Christmas presents. Gave some Christmas presents. People are getting mad in the snow weather. Um, old ladies calling me the B word, um, you know. People still out here grinding, people out here, but we're out here creating episodes. You know, this was a, kind of a light episode, but, you know, we're going to be back next week, and we're going to be talking about more and more. Um, be on the lookout for the Patreon page, and also be lookout for the stand-up comedy 15-minute half-hour shows, and also be on the lookout for the Twitch streams that are going to be starting up. Um, so I hope everyone has been doing a great job of uh, staying positive, Staying somewhat negative, you know, you got to you got to be negative sometimes, you know, you got to be real. Um, but anyways, I hope everyone has a great, fantastic day and uh, good morning reservations and good night reservations. Um, everyone have a great one. Hoi.